Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today we're going to talk about adult rhabdomyoma. Uh, this is a case from a 50-year-old man from the floor of the mouth that was growing under the tongue slowly for years and then was removed. You can see that this uh, particular example is multinodular, and each of the nodules has a very sharp circumscription. Some cases are a solitary mass and others are multilobular like this, and a small subset of cases actually can be multifocal in, in multiple different locations. These are benign tumors. They're quite rare. I only rarely get to see these in my practice. And they're composed of sheets of uh, richly, deeply eosinophilic cells. Let's zoom in closer here. These cells are polygonal, which uh, the other word that I like to use instead of polygonal is epithelioid. I mean, they're, they have round nuclei and abundant cytoplasm. The cytoplasm, though, is very deeply like this, this bright reddish uh, eosinophilic color and has kind of a granular uh, texture to it. And one thing I want to point out is look at how sharply circumscribed these cells are. You can really see well-defined cell borders around most of them. You'll also notice that a lot of them have prominent cytoplasmic vacuolation, and this is due to abundant glycogen in the cytoplasm. And what happens is as these vacuolations kind of uh, break apart during tissue processing, it leaves remnants of the eosinophilic granular cytoplasm here that uh, surround the nucleus and kind of reach out little spidery processes to connect out to the cell membrane. So these are uh, called spider cells is the, the kind of... Uh, visual terminology that's been given to them. And these are the hallmark of uh, adult rhabdomyoma. I believe you can also see them in cardiac rhabdomyoma, although I rarely encounter those in my practice. I feel like cardiac pathologists tend to see them more. So these are kind of some different, different variations on the pattern of what spider cells look like. So a pretty nice example here. So that is adult rhabdomyoma. They are totally benign. And oh yes, the other two things that you'll see, although sometimes you have to hunt for it, and we got lucky here, right here, look at this, cross striations, beautiful striations, because again, these are a skeletal muscle neoplasms. They are benign skeletal muscle neoplasms. They will have cross striations in most cases if you look long enough. And also they tend to have these kind of funny elongated rod-like crystals. Oh look, here's some more striations here. Here's a few striations here. And they also get these crystals. And to me, the crystals look a lot like the cross striations, only they tend to be kind of haphazard and jumbled on top of each other. I think here's some more striations. It's a little hard. This is as much as I can zoom in. Uh, it's one of those things you got to really go close and hunt around for. But you don't really need them to make the diagnosis. There's a very distinct tumor once you're familiar with the abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and the spider cells. Um, they will stain with Desmin pretty diffusely, and sometimes that helps highlight the, um, the striations. Oh yeah, the crystals, I don't really have a good example here. Uh, they're in here, but it's just hard to showcase them uh, to you. But the crystals have been likened to uh, jumbled kind of rods or jack straws. And jack straw is a, an old-timey game that's also been known as pickup sticks, where you, you drop a bunch of uh, sticks onto the floor and they all overlap each other. I'll put a, a link in the video description so you can see an example. And wow, I don't think I noticed this before, but here's a perfect example of the cross striations. I'll have to mark this part of the slide. Let me go out so you can find this. If you want to see the uh, whole slide digital image for this case, I have it posted on KikoXP.com, and I'll put a link in the video description uh, down below so you can go explore. So if you zoom out here, it's up at the top of this piece, and you can go zoom in, and you can see some amazing cross striations here. Um, in this kind of uh, uh, immature skeletal muscle cell that makes up cardiac rhabdomyoma. So um, what other things could come in the differential diagnosis? Um, oh yeah, I wanted to point out, I can't remember if I said this earlier, that cardiac rhabdomyomas um, can look a little similar to this, I think, but they uh, tend to have a bunch more uh, glycogen um, uh, cytoplasmic vacuolation, it seems like, although I, like I said, I don't see those very often. And cardiac rhabdomyomas are associated with tuberous sclerosis in many cases. These adult rhabdomyomas are not usually, and they, they typically occur in the pharynx, larynx, head and neck region of adults, um, often over the age of 40, and they're more common in men, uh, I think by a, a ratio of about three to one. They're totally benign, but they can recur locally. So um, what other things, uh, and, and these are not associated with tuberous sclerosis. Uh, the other thing I think that we should talk about is what's in the differential. To me, like I said, this is a very distinct lesion once you're familiar with it, especially once you find the striations. Um, and immunostains can sort this out really easily if you need help. But the other things, the most common thing I think people get it confused with, and when I posted this case on, on my Twitter and Facebook 
um, uh, accounts, uh, a lot of people got the answer right, but there were people who thought it looked like granular cell tumor, which is a fair thought. Uh, granular cell tumor does have this kind of somewhat like this cytoplasm, although I feel like granular cell tumor, the graininess, the granularity of the cytoplasm is more prominent and you obviously won't find cross striations. Also, the color of granular cell tumor is more pale in comparison to this deep, rich, reddish color that uh, rhabdomyoma cells have. But the most helpful thing, I think, to help you sort out uh, rhabdomyoma from granular cell tumor is that the cells are very sharply circumscribed with obvious cell borders, and the, lesional, uh, the lesion is circumscribed sharply, uh, circumscribed nodules uh, for rhabdomyoma. Granular cell tumor is the opposite of that. The cells usually have um, poorly formed cell borders and thus they make a syncytial arrangement. They kind of merge with their neighboring cells and it's hard to see where one cell ends and the other begins. I have a video on my YouTube channel, a short video about granular cell tumor. I'll put a link uh, for that in the video description so you can compare and contrast the features of these two entities. The other thing is that granular cell tumors uh, almost always have a poorly circumscribed border. And that's because they usually, uh, instead of making it a fused sheet like this, they usually intercalate and have a kind of infiltrative appearance um, where they, they uh, spread between the adjacent collagen bundles. They're usually in the dermis or submucosa and they, they intercalate with the, the thick collagen bundles there. And it gives the uh, periphery of the lesion a kind of infiltrative uh, appearance. And again, rhabdomyomas are usually going to be sharply circumscribed. I didn't talk about this, but the nuclei here in rhabdomyoma, I think people don't really focus on that very much because the cytoplasm is the real distinct feature. But the nuclei look like this. They're round, kind of have a pale cytoplasm or pale uh, nuclear chromatin and a, a punctate central nucleolus. Okay. And the, the nuclei are usually pretty uniform. You can occasionally see some scattered atypia. Mitoses are very uh, minimal or absent in rhabdomyoma. So that's what could help sort out if you were concerned that this could be a rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdomyosarcomas may have some big eosinophilic cells, rhabdomyoblasts, but they're going to have pleomorphism and um, mitotic activity depending on the subtype. Uh, they usually look pretty atypical. They also will, in addition to pink rhabdomyoblastic cells, they'll also have either spindle cells, uh, sheets of pleomorphic uh, atypical cells, or sheets of round blue cells or, or nests or aggregates of round blue cells, again, depending on the different subtype. Um, they will have other cells aside from these big pink cells, and they will be much more atypical and mitotically active. So that's uh, the feature that can really help sort that out. The other things uh, people bring up, oh yeah, and granular cell tumor, of course, will be diffusely S100 positive, and rhabdomyomas are going to be Desmond positive. They can rarely have some S100, supposedly. That's what uh, Dr. Weiss's textbook says, but I don't recall ever seeing that personally. But again, these are so rare, I've only seen a handful of cases. So, um, but the, when the S100 is positive here, it's supposed to be focal uh, rather than diffuse. Other things people sometimes think this looks like is paraganglioma, which could have some similarity in the cells, but should have a more nested cell ball in appearance and will be a synaptophysin and chromogranin positive, but negative for Desmond. Alveolar soft part sarcoma can have cells that look a good bit like this, I agree, but again, they'll have a nested appearance, usually with breakdown in the middle of the nest that give it that alveolar or pseudo-alveolar look, and they should be Desmond negative and they'll be positive for TFE3. So um, pretty easy to sort those out once you have um, uh, an appreciation of features, but immunostains can really solve the problem if you're having a difficult uh, case. And uh, it's reasonable to think of alveolar soft part sarcoma because they, they often occur in the, in the mouth region too, or they may occur, excuse me, oftentimes they're in other places in the deep soft tissue. Um, also, sometimes you could think of hibernoma because they have a, a granular reddish cytoplasm like this, but instead of this kind of loose vacuolation, they should have sharply circumscribed vacuoles because they're filled with lipid droplets because they're a brown fat tumor and they'll be negative for Desmond. And oncocytoma, which is an epithelial tumor that would be keratin positive, and um, crystal storing histiocytosis, which is an entity that I've rarely ever seen. Uh, they can also uh, have some cytoplasm like this, but they'll look different. Otherwise, you'll also have keratin for oncocytoma and crystal storing histiocytosis would be positive for histiocyte markers and negative for Desmond. But I'll let a hematopathologist give you more information about that because it's outside of uh, the range of things that I usually see. So there you go. Um, adult type uh, rhabdomyoma, and there are a couple other types, like I said, cardiac, and then there's fetal and genital type rhabdomyomas, which I think are even more rare than these and are, are 
They're kind of complicated. We'll have to address those in a different video where I have a slide to show you a nice example of. But again, good example of spider cells and be sure to check out the link down below so you can go and explore this whole slide uh, digital image because it's really one of the best examples of adult rhabdomyoma that I've seen. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd encourage you to do so and please click like and leave any comments or questions you may have uh, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.